Hello, my name is Russ Congleton. I'm a professor of remote sensing and geographic information systems at the University of New Hampshire, and I'm also the New Hampshire VIEW director. And I'm very excited that I've been able to prepare a, a series of uh, videos, lectures here for you on what I call the science of where, or more appropriately, how to think spatially. And I think uh, learning to think spatially is uh, kind of neglected these days, and uh, some of our technology has replaced our ability to um, think spatially, but it's still critically uh, important. And so there's a series of lectures, there's uh, some exercises for you to do, and hopefully you will enjoy going through these and learning about how to improve your spatial thinking ability. So learning to think spatially, uh, most of this lecture is primarily out of a book um, that came from the National Academy uh, called Learning to Think Spatially, GIS or Geographic Information Systems as a support system for K through 12 uh, curriculum. And uh, this is a really powerful uh, report that was done by the National, National Research Council. You can see the web address there. You can download the the book for free. So it was, as I said, published by the National Academy of Sciences, which is a nonprofit organization in Washington, D.C., and which, interestingly enough, was uh, begun all the way back in 1863 by uh, President Abraham Lincoln. And so there's a working group, and the working group that came up with this specific learning to think spatially um, report uh, had to do with uh, Geographical Sciences Committee under the Board of Earth Science and Natural Resources under the Division of Earth and Life uh, Studies. And so it was published again by the National Academy back in 2006. And so a lot of what I'm going to uh, reporting on and, and talking to you about came from this source, although I will cite other sources as we go through the um, different videos. So let's introduce the topic, make sure we understand what we're talking about. So all of us have the ability to speak, to think spatially, okay? And if you think about it at all, you'll realize that there's uh, many, many scientific discoveries um, that came as a result of um, the scientists thinking spatially. And Albert Einstein comes to mind. Maybe you think of Watson and Crick, this idea about the how DNA is in a double helix and how it was done. They had some very poor 2D pictures of what things might look like, and they were able to put that together and come up with this 3D double helix of DNA, which was uh, revolutionary at the time, okay? So as I've already alluded, spatial thinking is a key to doing well in science, technology, engineering and mathematics. We call, we call those the STEM disciplines, and I'm sure you've heard that um, term before, but we could take it a little further than that. It's just not limited to the STEM disciplines. And so I like to add um, A to that and call it the STEAM disciplines because art uses a lot of spatial thinking as well. Okay, And so there's a lot of different uh, tests that you can do, games that you can play, methods that you can use for improving your spatial thinking and we're going to explore some of those and i'll give you some exercises to do as we go through these um, videos okay so here, here's a quick example i've got a couple of examples here for you to start thinking about what we're talking about here and so this happens to be a, a map produced by the virginia department of forestry for wildlife fire assessment and so you can kind of Look, and if you know anything about Virginia, you can go, okay, where are the, the risks? Okay, the risks are highest with the darker pinkish red um, color there. And so maybe you go, okay, well, that's uh, where the forests are, you know, over by West Virginia, Jefferson and Washington National Forest there, and kind of in central uh, Virginia, the coastal plain of Virginia, where lots of um, pine is grown. Okay, and so immediately, if you're from Virginia, you would look at the place that you are and you would go, okay, well, I know what's going on around here. I know what's going on around there. It's uh, spatial thinking. Maybe something that comes closer to home. Here's a COVID hotspot map for the USA. Um, at, at one point in time, doesn't matter what the date is, but immediately you look at this and you go, okay, 
Um, the darker the, the spot, the darker the red, the higher the occurrence um, at this point in this one day in time. And you can see, okay, you know, if I live in uh, Oregon, I'm in pretty good shape. If I live in Wyoming, I'm good. Doesn't look like Nevada's doing too well. Louisiana looks like it's having some trouble. I live in New York. Okay, I'm good with that. Uh, again, immediately you start thinking spatially. You start looking at things what's going on around me, okay? So spatial thinking, very important. Okay. So here's some definitions, a little introduction. So with some definitions, and these come from uh, a woman named uh, Nora Newcomb, and the paper is cited um, there from an educational standpoint, okay? So spatial thinking has to do with the location of objects, the relation of those objects to each other, and then how they can move through space. And you can think of hopefully lots of examples of where you do spatial thinking. Rearranging furniture, assembling a bookcase, following some kind of map. These days, they don't give you much words on those diagrams. They just give you pictures. If you're not a spatial thinker, you might have a tough time with that. Uh, reading a map. Okay. Hardly any of us use maps anymore because of GPS. Um, but it, it is important. Um, tell your driver, I'm looking at the map and you're going to be able to turn left, you know, um, 500 feet in front of us. Okay. Again, the GPS is helping with this, us with that. I happen to have lots of friends that seem to move all the time. I'm really good at packing the truck. So they'll rent a U-Haul and um, I'm not big at carrying all these big heavy things. My back is in bad shape, uh, but I am good at loading it and putting it into the truck so that we get the maximum amount of space. That's spatial thinking, okay? What spatial thinking is not is it's not a substitute for other kinds of thinking. It's not verbal thinking. It's not mathematical thinking. It's not a learning style. It's actually something completely unique and into itself, okay? From the learning to think spatially report that I talked about at the beginning here, uh, spatial thinking is based on a, a combination of these different elements, concepts of space, tools of representation, and processes of reasoning. And again, it's not restricted to any specific knowledge or domain, okay? But it's certainly very, very relevant, relevant in STEM, as we talked about science, technology, um, engineering, and math, but not limited to that, okay? So that's important. There are some other definitions here. You can you can look at these uh, from uh, intuitivethinking.com. It says that uh, spatial thinking involves analysis, problem solving, and pattern prediction of objects and their spatial relationships. It can involve geometry and geometric thinking, mathematical transformations, engineering, architecture, astronomy, geography, informatics, modeling, video gaming, big deal there, and arts. Okay, so they include arts. And then the National Research Council says that spatial thinking finds meaning in the shape, size, orientation, location, direction, or trajectory of objects, processes, or phenomenon, or the relative positions in space of multiple objects, processes, or phenomenon. Wow, that's a mouthful, huh? <laughs> anyway, spatial thinking uses the properties of space as a vehicle for structuring problems, for finding answers, and for expressing solutions. So we're gonna get into this in a lot more. So feel free to come back and look at these definitions later on if you need to, okay? So here's the million dollar question, right? Can you improve your spatial thinking ability? And the answer is 100% yes. So if you think you have no spatial ability right now, we can improve that. If you think you're a great spatial thinker, we can improve that. Okay, and uh, an ed American educator, uh, Daniel Willingham, basically said, intelligence can be changed through sustained hard work. Okay, and say so, uh, our abilities aren't fixed. They're not. Oh, you're born with this. You're you're a spatial thinker. Yeah, no. Okay, obviously we all have different talents, but um, we can all improve if we want to. So there's mounting evidence that abilities can improve. When those involved, in other words, everybody that's in your life, if you're, you know, if you're the student, um, maybe your parents and teachers, again, this was written for 
kindergarten through uh, 12th grade students. But if everybody's involved and believes it and are willing to work hard and we minimize anxiety. And so kind of fun way to minimize anxiety is to play games with this. And you'll see that we do some of that in these um, presentations. So they have found that improvements can be durable and they can be transferred to other tasks and settings. In other words, you could maybe improve your thinking, special spatial thinking for map reading, but that may improve your spatial thinking for arranging the furniture. So are there differences? Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay, we know that spatial thinking can be improved, but we also know that some people kind of have this more ability to have to do spatial thinking and others have a lower ability, okay? So if you're in a lower ability case, there's kind of an initial hump. You got to kind of battle through a little bit to get over that. Um, and it can take some perseverance, but once you achieve that, you, it's going to continue to grow and grow and grow. Other, the high ability participants, not so much that initial hump. They've, they've already kind of passed that. Um, but they can um, continue to improve maybe more than they imagine, okay? So it is important. So how can we improve spatial thinking, okay? Well, it takes the right kind of instruction and the right kind of technology. So we got to have some understanding of what spatial thinking is, hence this introductory lecture, and then the techniques that can be used to help you improve it. One of the key things and you may relate to this with math. I, a lot of times these days I hear students, I don't like math, I don't like math, I don't like math. Yeah, I think that's because we've done a very lousy job of teaching math. And so then there's anxiety over it and then there's issues, right? I, probably the same thing can be talk, said about spatial thinking, okay? So we wanna find ways to re reduce anxiety. And as I said, uh, probably a good way to do that is is to make it as enjoyable as possible through games and things, okay? So play can help improve uh, spatial thinking, especially at younger age children, but any kind of play, you know, board games that you sit around the table and play with your family, you know, those kinds of things, okay? And obviously, you know, you need to get some instruction in there as well. So it can't be all just fun and games. There has to be some understanding and some instruction, okay? Using spatial words like front and back and top and under and next to and those kinds of things. Puzzles, absolutely. Any kind of puzzle, 2D, you know, puzzle you would do as a family or 3D puzzles or uh, puzzles on your phone, iPhone or your Android phone or whatever. Uh, doing, uh, looking at maps, maybe getting some enjoyment out of looking at maps and relating that to where you live. Things like Google Earth, if you've ever used Google Earth, uh, easy uh, thing to download to your computer, free, and you can um, look at the whole world. Or models, but building different kinds of models, you know, cars, um, airplanes, uh, whatever you're interested in, okay? And then developing and using different analogies to help you explain things tries to help you with your spatial thinking. What are some other ways that we can improve spatial thinking? Well, again, using symbolic representations. So different kinds of language, maps, diagrams, sketches, graphics. Again, I've already said words like outside, inside, up, down, under, over, parallel. It, it makes you think about those things. Um, we'll see in a minute on the next slide that maps can transform uh, our thinking, help us with our spatial thinking. And obviously diagram sketches, graphs, they allow us to make inferences. This is how uh, different people have come up with these different solutions to scientific uh, problems, including Watson and Crick, right? Okay, analogies, seeing re relational similarities between one situation and another. And then lastly here, even gestures. So when you're communicating, you can't see me, but I'm moving my hands around as I'm recording this um, lecture. It just helps me um, to communicate better. So here's a classic example. This is an example that we use uh, if you've ever heard of geographic information systems or computerized mapping, but this is one of the like classic examples um, that we had. And this has got to do with a, 
cholera outbreak in, in central London back in 1854. And there was a physician, his name was Dr. John Snow. And what he ended up doing is plotting out, you can see the map here of uh, downtown London and showing where the outbreaks were, what was going on. And once he put this map together and studied it, he realized that um, there was a spatial component to where people were getting sick and realized that probably one of the wells people were drawing water from was contaminated. Okay. And so they stopped using that well and the, the uh, cholera epidemic ceased. Okay, So this is one of the earliest scientific useful examples of using uh, geographic um, data or spatial data to solve a problem, what we consider the classic. Uh, the other thing that you're probably thinking is what about gender differences, right? Are, are males better at following directions than females? Uh, guys never want to look at a map. You might you think of all these different stereotypes in your in your head or whatever. Um, there are definitely gender differences in spatial ability. However, and here's the big however, this is really, really important. Average results don't say anything about how you would perform. Okay, so both men and women can have very strong spatial thinking uh, abilities. And so don't say I'm I'm a man. So I, I obviously I know where I'm going all the time and spatial thinking is no big deal for me. <laughs> that may not be true. Okay. At the same time, don't 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 say, well, I have no spatial thinking abilities because I'm X, Y, or Z, right? Again, that's not true. Okay. So kind of fun. You know, we pick on each other sometimes about that. Guys refuse to ask for directions, but you know, fun stuff. But spatial thinking. Okay. So what are our goals here? Okay. Our goal is to foster a generation of us who are in the habit of thinking spatially. That would be really cool. Who can practice spatial thinking in some kind of informed way and who can adopt a critical stance to spatial thinking. In other words, can we learn? Can we grow? Can we improve? Can we get better at spatial thinking? And hopefully as we go through the rest of these videos, you will become convinced that this is something um, that you want to do and you want to help others to do. All right, so with that in mind, there's an exercise, exercise number one, and there will be a video that explains exercise number one. So please watch the video before you go try to do the exercise. There's also a PDF that provides instructions along with the link to the exercise. So the exercise is online. You'll be able to get the link and you'll be able to do the exercise, but you've got to <laughs> watch the video and you've got to look at the instructions before you just jump into this okay so it's a little self-test again no big deal don't worry if you don't do great on it there's no pressure but it is a little self-test to evaluate what your spatial thinking ability right now and the most important thing about that is that it's only 20 minutes you only have 20 minutes to answer the 45 questions okay so you can't take an hour and a half to try to get the 45 questions. So you wanna have a strategy for when you do that, but please set a timer and remember that you can only have um, 20 minutes. So the exercise should be fun. So do your best, but don't worry if it doesn't work all the time, you'll be, you'll be have some fun with it. And actually at the end, we're gonna let you try to do it again. And that'll be fun to see as well. Okay, great. See you for um, lecture number two.